tonight we have the great honor of hosting Seth Weintraub here um, for uh, a podcast e style. It's, it's a it's a fireside chat with a little bit of Q and A. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, Electrek, Nine to Five Max, some of the other great things that that Seth has done um, over the past few years that he's he's brought to uh, to humanity. <laughs> so. Um, a little, a little introduction before I have Seth uh, introduce himself. So some say that our guest uh, was the one, the entity behind um, the taking of Tesla private at 420. So Seth, with, with, with that said, uh, welcome. And uh, thank you for, for joining us tonight. No, thanks for having me. So my, my first big question for you is, um, no better place to start with this than how did this all get started? And then maybe a little bit of how did you get into electric nine to five Mac? So uh, my wife got a uh, gig in Paris. I was an IT manager here in New York City. Um, and, you know, I, I kind of went with her there. I didn't have any job. There's a kind of a story on Business Insider about my origin story. But basically, I was really into Apple Macintosh computers and going to Paris, there weren't any jobs for people like me. So I just started writing uh, first for Computer World. And then because I had some extra time, um, I started my own blog, uh, also learning CMSs and, and uh, content management systems. So, um, you know, 9to5Mac slowly built up and became kind of a big uh, Apple News website. Then why you guys are all here probably is because of Electrek. Um, I, I ended up, so kind of a weird story. I was in Santa Monica visiting a friend and um, I had some time to kill in Santa Monica, Santa Monica Mall in California. And I, you know, wandered into the Tesla place and I had, I know, I knew what Tesla was, you know, I covered uh, Google maps on Tesla and stuff for uh, my blogs. So I wasn't coming out of nowhere, but you know, I hadn't seen the car uh, in person. Um, so I walked in and I was like, Hey, you know, what's the story here? So somebody talked to me and I was like, Oh, I'd like to take a test drive. And they were like, well, you'd have to wait a month, but just so happens that the person who's supposed to go for a test drive now isn't here. So would you like to go? So I don't know if that was true or not, if the, you know, they really had a, a month long waiting list or not, but, um, I got to test drive it. Um, we were very close to buying a Chevy Volt EV. Um, at that time, which was around $42,000. And obviously after driving it, I was like, whoa, you know, like <laughs> we're not gonna do that. We're gonna buy this thing. Um, at the time they had a S40, Model S40, that was $49,000 after the uh, $7,500 tax credit. So me selling it to my wife saying, hey, this car seats seven, cause we, you know, we're gonna get the, ba the back two seats. And, um, you know, she was like very supportive. She was like, yeah, you know, American company, entrepreneurs, whatever. Um, so we bought the car, um, loved it. Obviously there's some quirks and quirks and features uh, as Doug DeMuro would say. Um, but, you know, there was not much in being said about it intelligently. There's a couple uh, electric vehicle websites out there but they weren't really talking about Tesla strangely. And there were a lot of like, you know, uh, general news sites that didn't really know Tesla inside and out. And here I was driving a car and I was like, Hey, there's a lot of stuff to be said about this car. So, and, you know, I know how to do a blog or, or, you know, a publication. So, you know, I started electric and, um, that was in 2013. Um, but you know, the, the Tesla experience, the buying, getting in one driving around was, you know, kind of life changing for me as it probably was for a lot of you guys. So for me, that was like, hey, I'm going to start a blog. Uh, this was 2013. Um, it, and I actually saw the car in 2012. So it wasn't like I could immediately get one. So this is kind of a, another kind of side note. Um, I was like, all right, you know, I had the 42,000 waiting, you know, to buy the Chevy Volt. And uh, I was like, all right, I want one of these. When can I have it? And they were like, <laughs> it's going to be a few months. So I was like, oh man. And then, you know, at that time I was like, well, I have this money. I should probably buy some stock if I'm so high on the car. So I bought some stock and, and that also did well. So um, yeah, that's, that's how I got into writing about Tesla. 
So they, they didn't tell you two weeks back then for delivery. It was it was a it was a couple no, months. Was, okay. Yeah, for the S forty, they were they were selling the uh, I think it was the eighty five um, back then, like almost immediately. It was the end of two thousand twelve, and the the list wasn't too long. It was like a month or two. But if you wanted the forty, which actually turned into an S sixty software limited to forty. Um, you had to wait till I think we got it in like March or April. Of so you ended up getting the 40 then? We got a S60, but it had been software limited to 40. And we were one of like a handful of people who were early enough to order the S40, but before they canceled the S40. Gotcha, gotcha. So they gave us an S60 software limited to 40. Were, what were, are you able to, to, um, to change that? Or uh, can you can you uncork that, as I say? Yeah, so we actually ended up uncorking it later. Not I don't know if they called it uncorking. Um, as well as they didn't give me supercharging for free either. But oh. they gave me like, like I was in New Jersey and I was like, oh man, I could really use the extra range. I was like, I'm Long Beach Island. So I called them up and I was like, hey, how much would it cost to you know give me supercharging access and um, some range? And this was like not even a year into it maybe like six months and they gave me a pretty good price. So I did it. I don't even remember what it was, but I remember thinking that's not so bad. It was less than, you know, the actual update upgrade. Um, in general, just a little bit more about you. What, what typically makes you passionate in life? I mean, you, you obviously tech seems to be pretty big, but is there something yeah. else besides that? Uh, tech's big. I mean, I have a family now, so, uh, we love to go snowboarding. We love to go, uh, biking. Um, we're kind of, home bodies around the house uh but for me you know technology is kind of where it's at what uh what was one of your first bits of tech that that got you into uh into all this that really started the, the passion going for that well um so i got my uncle gave me his macintosh 2ci which is a very old macintosh in like 1992 and he sent it to, i went to school in california at usc um, he sent it from Ohio and either he sent it to me broke or it broke along the way, but um, it, it uh, you know, it arrived broken. So I did some research on trying to get it fixed. And then, you know, I figured out it was like a bad hard drive or something. And I took it to the, to the school computer repair place. And I was like, Hey, I did all this troubleshooting. I think I have a bad hard drive. And they're like, wow, you know, a lot about computers. Would you like a job? And that's, and that was actually part of Apple at the time. So that was how I got my job at Apple. And then, you know, eventually got to nine to five Mac. Would, would you have ever considered yourself or even today, do you consider yourself a, a fanboy of, uh, of Apple? Uh, you know, covering a company sometimes <laughs> uh, takes the luster off of it, I would say. Um, that goes for just about everybody. Um, you know, we cover Google, nine to five Google. We cover uh, DJI on Drone DJ. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it it's definitely waned in the in the in the uh, years since then. Gotcha. So, what are some of the toughest parts of the job? The, the job for you. So the funnest part of the job is actually writing the stories and and doing the research and and uh, you know talking to sources and all that stuff, and you know collaboration. The tough part is like ad sales and um, ad tech and development. I mean. You know, I used to, I used, when, when the, the site started, I did all my, like I did everything. So, you know, I built the CMS, I, I dealt with the hosting, I would reboot the server, do all that stuff. Now I have people who do that, but it's quite frustrating because, you know, sometimes they're just not like on the same, you know, mindset I am. So, you know, we have conflicts and, and that, that's just annoying. I would, I would rather just hand that off to some other company and just do the writing and the reporting. Gotcha. So it's not the Twitter mob? <laughs> oh yeah, that, that, that's fun. <laughs> okay, so um, clearly, like I said, you, you're passionate about Tesla and about Apple, but what other companies out there really excite you? Well, you know, up until recently, Google was quite fun. Um, and, and, you know, they are doing some cool stuff with Waymo um, in this realm. Um, small companies, I mean, Another, another area right now that I'm into is uh, fitness technology. Um, so like Peloton's quite interesting. They, they've recently had some bad uh, financial news, but I, I still think it's pretty cool what they're doing. And I think like gamification of fitness is becoming 
uh, something really cool, all, uh, kind of in that same realm, uh, VR, uh, VR fitness, VR everything. You know, I don't know if you watched the the Facebook uh, Meta thing, but that was pretty weird. Um, certainly interesting, a little bit scary. So might we see uh, a nine to five fit in the uh, in the near future? Uh, we have connectthewatts.com. So oh. that's that's our right. our cool. our fitness technology website. So I guess, like you, you said, you talked about Peloton and this, but are, are there any other, are there specific products today or in development now that, that are exciting you? Whether it, it could be um, something like Sony that they're working on with their electric car, it could be some holographic tech, but is there anything out there that you're like, man, I, I either need that in my life or I'm so thankful I have that in my life? Well, I'm going back to fitness tech. I'm, I'm looking at the tonal. Have you seen the, it's like the mirror, but it's got like uh Oh, yes, stuff. yes. So that that seems pretty cool. I have a couple of friends who have it and they love it. So I'm I'm gonna order one of those. Gotcha. Anything else besides that? Um, nothing off the top of my head right now. I mean, a lot of what I like is uh, you know, cool gadgets. So one one gadget that maybe people here would appreciate is um, this thing called Neo Charge, which <laughs> you plug into your NEMA 1450 adapter. And you plug, you can plug two charging stations into it, and and you can control which one is charging, or both get half the power. Uh, so we take that up to our ski place when um, we have uh, two cars up there, for instance. Do Do you envision any tech in the near future where we can plug in a Peloton into the Tesla and charge it from <laughs> from that? We were actually just talking about in the uh, Connect the Watts room. Uh, Delta just added a a. a uh, a deal with uh, Peloton where they do their meditation classes, but wouldn't it be cool to take a class like while you're flying, like just fill up a plane with Pelotons and then, you know, do an hour class while you're, while you're up in the air, instead of, you know, just being lazy in a, in a seat, you could actually get some exercise while you're flying. This actually leads me to my exact next question, which was, I, I discovered that you, you have your pilot's license. Yep. Okay. So do you still have that today? Is it still something you use? Well, you, you never really lose your pilot's license, but I'm not current. So I, okay. I would have to take some classes. Um, the last thing I did was a couple of years ago, I, I flew a glider at Martha's Vineyard. Uh, so the, the reason I asked you, and I, I discovered this about you, I, one of my goals in life is to get my pilot's license. Like I really, really want it, but it's like $15,000. It's extremely expensive. Um, yeah, I actually, uh, I, I was at uh, in the aerospace at USC, uh, aerospace engineering. And um, one of the summers I was, I think it was like my sophomore or, or junior year. Um, I, through Santa Monica Community College, I was able to, to kind of, you know, as part of my like huge student loan project, I, you know, whatever, I was able to pay off all of my uh, pilots stuff through classes. And um, basically, I spent the whole summer, like, fast track, went from, you know, just reading some books to full on pilot in like four months. Gotcha. Do, do you, um, have you, have you seen anything yet so far? Or have you written an article or Fred or any, anyone at electric uh, specifically on uh, either uh, fuel cell aircraft or electric aircraft? I, I think Rolls Royce just came out and I believe they broke with the record for the fastest electric aircraft, if, if I'm correct on that. It's possible. Yeah, I know they were, we're aiming for that. Um, there's a bunch of stuff out there um, happening. It obviously has to happen. Um, and you're right, fuel cell is kind of like the, the answer there's also you know clean jet fuel which is mm. um made from you is know green similar to clean coal no it's actually a little bit more actually legitimate <laughs> okay it's actually clean it's it's just a flammable uh material made from um a process that's you know either comes from electricity which either comes from the sun or you know the wind or whatever gotcha so nothing specific that you've heard, nothing that, as far as your, your uh, ear to the ground on uh, companies doing fuel cell aircraft or electric aircraft. Or the, there's a, there's or definitely or happening like, a, you know, one one plane that I want to check out is this Pipistrol, uh, which is a Slovakian company that uh, makes uh, electric planes. And, and those are the ones that are now legal in the U <laughs> EU and you know, they're certified in the EU and it's hopefully soon here. Um, there's an Israeli startup that's now based in Seattle. I can't remember their name off the top of my head, but uh, they just had a deal with um, Norway um, that is going to be, uh, they're going to have like small planes. And then there's another uh, 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 seaplane thing happening in Vancouver area. 
um, right now with with electric planes because those are only like little hops, like uh, you know, twenty minute flights. So they're swapping batteries. Uh, on those. So, so we lots could of, probably lots of see we could probably see a, a massive decrease in the pl- uh, the price of flights too if, if we get to fuel cells or electric. Yeah, I mean, obviously, electric is a long way from right, uh, right. those long long haul flights, and and you're going to either need to do fuel cells or you know clean uh, fuel. Gotcha. All right, so a, a little bit of a different question here, but I, I think this is something that I discussed that would be fun to talk to you about. But what what makes the uh, the motor turn at electric? Uh, what 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 like keeps gets us up every day? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, it's, you know, it's an exciting world. Like we're, you know, in 2013, um, we kind of saw early, like, hey, this is going to, this electric car thing has to happen and, and it's going to happen. You know, I think anybody who drove the Tesla Model S in, in 2013 knew, like, this is a, this is something special. So we've kind of been charting the, you know, the transition and we think it's going to just you know kind of uh accelerate quite a bit so it's exciting to be kind of on the forefront of that and and, you know we make some news and we can kind of steer the way people are thinking about uh electric vehicles so that's fun yeah now um a little bit of of an apple question for you here just because i figure we we have uh you know like i i i have a little bit about this i can go on but i I was a huge apple fanboy back in the day um but how have you seen apple change over the years and maybe specifically from the times of jobs to cook yeah i think that was probably the biggest change Uh, you know obviously the different leadership style uh tim cook's not really a product person um he was in a management or a logistics, I think it was, right? Yeah, he's like a, I actually ended up in an industrial and systems engineer. I think he was this industrial systems engineer as well. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not a sexy job, but it's, it, you know, keeps, keeps it, the, the place going. Um, there's still a lot of smart people there. Um, they're doing some, you know, cool stuff that doesn't really get recognized. Obviously, uh, people here will appreciate how they've gone to, uh, uh, carbon neutral, although a lot of what they're doing to get there is like, you know, buying solar in very cheap solar places and saying, well, you know, it all goes in the grid. So we're buying cheap solar over here and we're using expensive electricity over here. So it evens out. They got to work on that a little bit. Their whole supply chain is also getting uh, gr- green. Um, you know, I still have an Apple Watch. Uh, I'm still carrying an iPhone. So. <laughs> So I'm still there. Do you think the removing of the charging brick was actually about sustainability or is that a financial move on their behalf? I think it's a little bit like uh, when you go to a hotel and they, they say uh, the towels, you know, like we won't wash the towels. It's, it's like one of those things, well, it does both. So why, right, why wouldn't right. we do it? Gotcha. You know, like it's same with Apple. It's like, well, we can save money and it's greener. So why would we not do that? Right. Um, uh, so a little yeah. both. Have, have you ever had the chance to to speak with Jobs or uh, or with uh, with Tim? Yeah, so um, Jobs before I worked at uh, or I started Nine to Five Mac, I was uh, at a branding agency in uh, New York City, and we were working on the Red campaign, which you probably have heard of. The uh, it's you know fighting AIDS in Africa and some other stuff, um, which you know that was run by Bono um, from U uh, two and. Uh, Jobs and Bono came into our office um, and, you know, the, it was like a 98% Mac office. I was running it. So I was like a big Mac guy and, and you know, buying everybody Macs, but we needed a PC to check like PowerPoints and stuff. So, you know, we're all, all kind of sitting there working and we, the one PC was like sitting, you know, right near where Jobs was. And he was like, what is this? And, you know, everybody laughed and I was like, I don't know. I feel <laughs> like he's like, not power, joking. <laughs> PowerPoint, you know, we need PowerPoint. So I don't know. That was kind of funny. Um, what what, uh, what ended up happening with that? Uh, with the red thing? No, just the end of that story with the, the PC being there. What was that? Oh, he was kind of just, I, I think he was just kidding. Like, I mean, <laughs> it was a, it's a business. It was like, you know, before <laughs> Apple was anything. And we had like 90, 98% Mac. So 
I think he was pretty pleased overall that Gosh. and probably one of the reasons why they were working with us. Uh, so like I said, I, I was a huge, huge Apple fanboy back in the day. Like, like I didn't know anyone that was obsessed as I was. Um, and then uh, Jobs died. And I, I realized like a lot of that passion was directly tied to him, um, which is sad because now I have a Galaxy 20, a Samsung watch, but I'm talking to you from an iMac. So, you know, okay. <laughs> but um, now, now, so what happened was, you know, there was this period of time where it was kind of like, man, this, this really stinks. Like you, you lose a hero, right? Um, and then this guy, Elon Musk, appeared and then kind of fulfilled uh, that role of, man, this, this person is here to change the world. They're here to make it better. Um, now, Elon is still alive, thankfully, right? Um, he hopes to die on Mars. It's not an impact. But who, who do you see um, potentially out there today from, from, you know, from what you see uh, in the tech world that could be the next Bezos, Musk, Jobs? That's hard to say. Um... The guy who runs Rivian, uh, I mean, I know that's RJ, right? Cliche, cliche, RJ, RJ Scringe, um, he's pretty, pretty, pretty good. Um, he's got a really good head on his shoulders. Um, stable genius is what his uh, his colleagues call him. So, um, you know, that's that's in my experience, which is you know, kind of focused around cars and and stuff. I think they go public tomorrow, right? IPO? Uh, it's either tomorrow. I mean, it's weird. Those IPOs are weird. It's either tomorrow. It'll be before Friday for sure. Okay. So uh, I saw something on Twitter today that said part of the, there was a little bit of a uh, Tesla sell-off for the stock today. And right. um, they said it's possible that it's just even leading into to Rivian's IPO, just movement of, uh, of money around. Who knows? That's speculation. But uh, interesting. Yeah. Another, another EV startup going public. Uh, so now a, a little bit on Tesla. We have a few more minutes here before we get into the Q&A. Uh, mm -hmm. But what do you see as Tesla's biggest strengths and weaknesses? Well, I think they, they you know, really got a, a good head start. And, and Elon Musk deserves a lot of credit for that. Um, you know, kind of betting it all on EVs mm -hmm. early on, seeing, all right, this is, this is the future. We're not going to, you know, have a hybrid or anything like that. Um, and also like investing in technology that, um, you know, in, in programmers and a, a UI and not kind of just like, hey, you know, Google put your stuff in my car and, and we don't want to have to touch that. Or, you know, we don't want to have to build our own battery factory. We'll just buy from LG or we don't want to have to build our own charging network. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll rely on somebody else. So all those decisions he made uh, early on are, you know, they give Tesla a really big head start. Um, but, uh, perhaps he might be one of their biggest weaknesses at this mm -hmm. point. Um, his, his, uh, Twitter persona has really turned off a lot of people that I know. Um, you know, they have a superior car in almost every way. Uh, but some people won't even consider buying a Tesla because of him. Um, so I don't know. I don't know, you know, what you take the good with the bad. Um, right. And it seems to be that he's, he's potentially starting to make his way out. I think he even made an announcement a few quarters ago or so that he's like, okay, my, my time as CEO, he's like, I still want to be in the company. I still want to be involved. I still want to do engineering, but specifically as a CEO role. Um, I mean, now he's, he's techno king, right? He's not even CEO. So. Yeah. I don't think he's going to, you don't think he'll step down soon. He's not going to step down. I don't think he has a personality type to do that. I mean, mm. it's like jobs didn't step down until he, he was like, you know, on desk door. So, yeah. um, you know, like if you step down, you're going to have a boss. You're going to, you're not going to make decisions. I, mm -hmm. I just don't see Elon in that role. Plus he sees himself and a lot of the people who he surrounds himself with sees himself as Tesla. So it, for me, it would be hard to, to imagine him being okay with, with uh, a reduced role. Gotcha. So if anything, he wouldn't step down a position, he would step out. Um, I would, yeah, I mean, I guess he would be like a chairman, uh, kind of like a Bill Gates, you know, initially he left Microsoft, but re retained chairman. I think he's got like close to 15, 20%, depending on, of, of the company and stock. So, um, you know, he's going to be there in one way or another. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So my last question for you for the, uh, the fireside chat por uh, portion is, 
Um, obviously, Tesla has been ridiculously successful over the past few years, right? Past decade has just blown away any any other automaker out there, and even even other companies. Um, do you? see other companies having the potential to, I don't know if we could say meet or exceed, but um, just to, to somewhat get close to that Tesla level, whether it's Rivian or Lucid, uh, there's there's a, a startup company in Arizona called Atlas that's actually making their own battery cells. Um, and to my knowledge, it's the only one out there that is actually making their own cells. I'm not sure if, I don't think BYD is, correct? BYD makes their own cells. They're, okay. Interesting. So maybe um, what, what um, do you want to talk a little bit maybe about them? Well, I mean, BYD is a, a Chinese company, but uh, Berkshire, you know, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway owns a big chunk of it. Um, they make these kind of compelling uh, LFP blade cells that um, I think Tesla is probably going to employ in a lot of their cars, uh, particularly in China um, and, and where China exports. Um, LFP cells are actually kind of a big deal at the can moment. You, can you just uh, say what those are just in case? Uh... Sure, they're uh, iron, instead of um, nickel-based, they're iron-based um, anode cathodes. Uh, you know, without getting too deep into it, um, they're, they're less dense energy-wise, but they're also a little bit more stable, so they don't catch on fire, fire nearly as easily, and they're also less expensive. So, um, you know, Elon's indicated, and I think a lot of other companies are indicating um, that a much bigger mix of their cars are going to have LFP cells. Um, unfortunately, or, you know, fortunately, depending how you look at it, um, China uh, owns all the IP for LFP cells until 2022 next year. So we're not going to see Is Tesla allowed to, to produce those in China? To do what? Or is Tesla allowed to, I guess, uh, to, to produce LFP cells in China at uh, the Gigafactory there? Um, I believe Cattle is su uh, supplying the uh, LFP cells for them. Um, I don't know if they're, I, th I think the actually the LFP cells in the US cars, um, the, the standard range plus cars are also Cattle cells. Hmm. Um, Which can be charged uh, to 100%. They can be charged to 100 percent they uh they have different features like uh they they don't handle the cold as well mm -hmm. um they lose a little bit more you know as a percentage of their charge in the cold they don't charge quite as fast um so there's there's some downsides to them as well but the big big upsides are they're they're much cheaper i, I believe they're uh, quite a bit heavier um which is not obviously an upside um but they're much more stable so like if you know a part uh, debris on the road goes up through the bottom of the car, they're not going to explode. So the, the closest thing we have to solid state today, potentially. Yeah, it, it does kind of behave like solid state, although solid state charges much faster and, and you know, typically uh, de degrades a lot less. Right. All right, uh, I'm going to stop it there. I want to make sure that we have enough time for, for Q&A. Uh, I don't know if I said it in the beginning. I don't believe I did. But if you have questions, you're more than welcome to use the raise hand icon in the bottom, I think it's the bottom left, um, and I'll just call on you and you can ask your question. Um, you can also type it into the chat box if you know I can read it aloud for you. Um, yeah, so let's, I guess we'll, let's go ahead and get this going. And, and Seth said, uh, you can ask hard questions. And if you don't ask the hard questions, I will ask the hard questions. <laughs> so we'll, we'll go ahead and open this up now. And I do have a, a couple that were submitted prior, so maybe I'll get the ball rolling with those. And oh, actually, we have a we have a question, Jeffrey. Go ahead and uh, uh, unmute your microphone and uh, ask your question. Hi. So I was a fanboy of Apple too. I kind of worked in the industry. Um, what do you think is the most overrated product they came up with? And do you think the company changed for the fact that you know he passed away or when Johnny Ives left? Uh, so I'll answer your last question first. Um, I think it was just kind of a slow progression. Like things have kind of gotten more corporate feels kind of more like IBM than it does like, you know, the old Apple, you know, with the pirate flag and all that other stuff. Um, so, and then what was the first part again? Sorry. It's late. <laughs> no, that's, um, what do you think the most overrated product was that Apple overrated? I collect, some, well, I collect some, I still have a new, Actually, I got it across. Um, I mean, there was a lot of products that flopped. Like I remember, like that hi-fi speaker and the iPod socks, and uh, you know, like 
a lot of people forget about the stuff that flopped, but um, they had a gaming system too. They had a gaming system. They had that one like cube. Um, I actually was an IT guy in Hong Kong and we had a bunch of those cubes. And um, whenever the window washers came by, the like static electricity of that would shut down everybody's computers. So, you know, obviously that wasn't great. Um, so what is their most overrated thing? Uh, hmm. I mean, like the, the iPhone 13 compared to the iPhone 12, it's like a slightly better camera, like not even that much better. Um, so those people who upgrade every year, I, I just don't understand like why, you know, like you have an iPhone 12. Right. Thank you. Well, I have a question from the chat here. And like I said, you're more than welcome to ask your question aloud. Just use the, the raise hand icon. Uh, I think it's bottom left. So question from the chat from David, which company startup or legacy is the biggest near future challenger to Tesla? Um, I know they're friends, but I think um, Volkswagen is probably going to be uh, uh, one of the, the bigger uh, challengers to Tesla eventually. That it, it actually, the relationship um, with uh, Deese that uh, Elon has reminds me a little bit of the Apple Google relationship early in that those days, you know, right before the uh, iPhone and Android came out. Uh, Google and Apple were very close. They, they worked together on the iPhone. Um, so I kind of feel like uh, Volkswagen, and Volkswagen isn't just Volkswagen. Volkswagen is also Porsche and Audi and Skoda and like 16 other brands you've never heard of. Um, so I, I see them coming on strong. Um, you know, Rivian is going to be, you know, you know, you know, full disclosure, I bought, uh, or I have one on order, a Rivian. Um, I think they're going to be a, a, a player. Um, they have Amazon money. So, you know, they don't have to worry about money. They have a really good leader, as I said before. Um, and I think the product is really nice. Um, I got to drive uh, the R1T uh, for a couple of days and that thing was, it's just absurd. So, and I've, I've driven in a cyber truck and I've driven in a Ford one F F-150 Lightning. Um, and those are all, like both, are, all three of those are amazing vehicles, but the Rivian was kind of like the best for me. It's a little bit smaller. Um, it's got like a few more toys. So, you know, that's kind of where I'm at in that. Gotcha. Uh, Dave, if you want to go ahead and unmute your microphone and uh, ask your question. Thanks, I appreciate it. So uh, I noticed when you said earlier you were into uh, fitness and technology and that caught my eye. Uh, I'm just curious, I know you spoke about the tunnel, the Peloton. Uh, have you had time to research the hydro? It's like a Peloton with a rower. I was just curious yep, of yep. your opinion if you had uh, on that. Yeah, so uh, Peloton is actually coming out with a rower in the next few months. Um, we found code in their app that has like scenic rowing things. Um, and that was, we posted that on 95 Google because it was the Android app. Um, but uh, Hydro is a great, great uh, uh, platform, I guess. Um, my neighbor has one. Um, he's actually a uh, Barron's uh, podcaster and, and reporter. Um, and he's got like a whole room full of like exercise equipment. Part of why I'm probably, you know, into it because like we're racing on Peloton all the time. Um, if anybody out there is on Peloton, we, we have races. So if, if you guys want to get into that, let me know. Um, so yeah, I think the hydro is good. Uh, it, rowing for me is not a big thing I want to get into. I know it works your whole body, but for me, it's just not like as exciting as, you know, biking. Uh, this one was a question from Facebook. I'll go ahead and ask this one. It was, how do you quell the anger uh, people feel towards EVs? You know, the backlash against charters at Stewart's or government incentives? That's funny you say that because, um, you know, we get that in our town a lot. Like our, you know, anytime it's, anytime, you know, somebody brings up, hey, we should have a, a charger or whatever. There's always like 15, 20 people who just pile on like EVs are stupid. And I'm never going to have an EV. I don't know how you do it. Like, uh, you know, obviously you, you're never going to convince somebody by telling them they're, in, they're an idiot. Um, but 
you know, I don't know. I just, you know, I think you get butts in seats. Right. Um, you know, prices come down. Like, you know, when in five years, every car is going to go zero to 60 in five seconds or less because, like, it's not that hard to make an EV go zero to 60 in five seconds. Um, you know, you can start, you can warm up your car in your garage. You can, you know, have a full charge every morning. There's no smoke. You don't have to deal with gas stations. There's just so many positive benefits that, you know, I think everybody's just going to eventually like cave to it. You know, just like everybody, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of film camera guys who are like, you know, I'm never going to go digital. And, you know, eventually everybody did or almost everybody did. Gotcha. So you, at a point you won't have to convince anyone or try to call the anger. It's look, you realize at this point, it makes sense now that the diesel guys who want to, you know, roll coal, it's like, it's not going to be fun anymore. It's, it's just not going to be fun to waste all that money on, on diesel. No, not when you can buy a, a less expensive, much better vehicle uh, that goes much faster and, and has more features. Like it right. just, it's not gonna make sense. So question from the chat, which is, there's two, but there's one that's a little short. So the first one is, how do you rank your favorite uh, cars from Tesla for Model S, 3, X, and Y? Uh, I'm not an SUV driving fan. So I will say 3, S, X, and then Y. And I own a Y, so, <laughs> uh, but my wife does most of the driving in it. Um, I own a 3, so, um, you know, it's it's my favorite car to drive of any car that I've ever driven. I, Is it I a performance dual motor? Uh, it's all wheel drive. Okay. Uh, I didn't get the performance. Um, Fred has a performance. Uh, you know, he doesn't have kids to deal with, so it's, it's not really my thing. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, the the X was cool for like you know for swag. You, you know, pulling up into the, the baseball game with the the things and then having the uh, plays that Christmas thing it does and all that other stuff was cool. Gotcha. So three X or th uh, three S and then Y and X, you said? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the follow-up question there was, uh, if, if you might have some insight on this, but why is the 4680 battery delayed? Any view on when we will really see the cars rolling off the factory floor, I guess, uh, with those cells and... Yeah, I think it's just a new technology. Uh, when you're kind of forecasting the time it takes, and this is, you know, one of the big things about Elon is like he makes all these prognostications about timing and he has really no idea how long it's going to take mm -hmm. to do these things that have never been done before because, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of unknowns. So I think this is no exception. The 4680 probably, you know, they were like, you know, it works great in the lab. Let's just you know, get this up, you know, on, on big scale, and then it doesn't work on big scale. So they have to make some changes or whatever. I mean, it's going to happen. They, they have, they have the batteries. They just need to perfect the process. Um, Thoughts on timing? Not two weeks. To say. <laughs> Please don't say two weeks. No, not two weeks. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, for that, it's like, uh, you're, you're not going to get a huge bump in, in, the technology uh the bigger thing to me is the um you know battery as part of the structure of the vehicle because right. you know what happens if you hit you know part of it or what happens if you have a couple bad batteries you have to take the mm -hmm. whole car apart or you have to do some like spot welding or that. like i don't quite understand i mean i understand the benefits of that you know obviously a lighter car you know more space but there's reasons that things are modular so you know, the trade-off there is a little bit, you know, concerning. Uh, question from uh, from the, the video. <laughs> Cole, if you want to go ahead and uh, ask your question. Oh, yeah. Uh, what is a question or topic that Tesla owners should be bringing up, but they aren't? I mean, there's two things that really concern me about Tesla, generally speaking. One is the quality control. Um, I don't know what everybody else's experience has been, but I've had four cars and they've all been, you know, not great with uh, fit and finish. Oh yeah, I found a razor blade in mine, like in the wind in, in the windshield. There was a razor blade. 
Oh, that well, that could have been like a service guy. Scraping. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I feel like they know it's a problem. They know it's been a problem for a long time. I don't know if it's like Elon saying, you know, we don't need that QA stuff. You know, we'll let the owners QA it or whatever. Um, so that's concerning because it hasn't improved. And, you know, like, frankly, Tesla is going to sell every car they make. So they're probably putting all hands on deck on making more cars. But it's concerning because, you know, here comes Volkswagen and, and a bunch of German manufacturers and even Ford and, and Chevy that, you know, know how to make a, a, a good car fit and finish wise. You know, once once everything else starts to become closer to parity, it's going to be Tesla's like undoing. The other thing is like, I'm really not feeling good about Tesla's self-driving. Um, Do you have it, beta? I, I don't have the full self-driving beta. Um, I've heard from a, a ton of people. I know, uh, Stephen, you have it as well. Um, that it is great on highways. It's pretty good in the suburbs, but it's absolutely not usable in city uh, spaces. Um, and I don't think they're going to get to where they think they're going to get in the, the time period that they think they're going to get there. I think we're you know a few years out at least. So you know I don't know if there's going to be like shareholder lawsuits or, or not shareholder, but like you know, driver lawsuits saying, hey, you said full self-driving in 2017 and it's five years later, that kind of stuff. So that's a little bit concerning because I think Tesla has been, well, you know, obviously from the top, um, been a little bit disingenuous about their, you know, time period to full self-driving and robo-taxis and all this stuff. Um, we have a we have a couple questions building up in the chat. So I guess we'll try to try to do uh run through them a little bit more quickly. So do you think we're close to flying cars? I mean, what's your definition of a flying car? Like you can drive a plane down the street, uh, <laughs> that's a flying car. Um, I, so maybe something like a VTOL? Yeah, I, I really don't know if that's where we wanna go as a society. Like right now we, we have planes going overhead pretty uh, sparsely, but you know, like if there's a plane flying over your house every, you know, two or three minutes or even every minute or even yeah. just like traffic, um, I think that would get pretty annoying. And I know electric uh, planes would be much quieter, but it's still kind of weird to imagine just like a, a sky full of cars. Um, so a that's a little song. bit. Yeah, there's a. So, that, you know, that's a case for the boring company, right? Um, but. I don't, for the life of me, as a New Yorker, I really don't get why the hell we're putting cars in the boring tunnel when we should be putting trains and, you know, subways or whatever in there. Like this, this thing they're doing in Vegas with like a car going through these tunnels, it like, it makes no sense to me. Like you can fit four people in a car or you can have like a subway car with like, you know, 50 people. Like doesn't I guess there's the, the sexy component to it. And then maybe they can work on, uh, creating a proprietary vehicle for the boring company. I guess. I don't know. Uh, so what do you think of Fisker? He was promising his cars would have solid state batteries. Then went back on that. He's reminding me of Trevor Milton with all of his promises. That's a good, good analogy. There's a whole group of people that are kind of in that same realm. So um, I think uh, I wouldn't put money on Fisker at this point. Um, it just doesn't seem like it's going to be a, a realistic endeavor. Gotcha. Um, here's a great question. So why do you think Tesla does not have a solid opportunity for customer feedback suggestions? Tesla service does have uh, Tesla service does have a follow-up question mechanism, but no opportunity to bring attention to customer perceived desires for future uh, for features or, or, or deficiencies. Um, I mean, there's two things. One, I think Elon has a kind of a, a really corrupted feedback loop. Like I don't think he surrounds himself with people who give him honest feedback. Um, and that kind of extends out into the the service world. Um, I, right now, honestly, Tesla can't make enough cars. So what do they need? You know, what, what's, they, they don't have the problems of, uh, you know, not enough cars or whatever. They, for me, it's like Tesla is going to change a lot when they reach a point where they can sell or they, they can't, they can make more cars than they can sell. Right. So right. I think all these things start happening, hopefully, like the, the fit and finish improves, the, the customer service and the feedback improves. But 
right now, all they're focused on is making more cars. That's one of the, the biggest things I tell people when um, is just the best thing for Tesla is that they can have actual competition, uh, which sounds like, no, that's terrible. Like we don't want competition. We want to keep destroying everyone. But it's like, no, the best thing for Tesla long-term is, is really just good competition. Uh, do you think Tesla will acquire anyone, i.e. Nikola? I.e. Nikola? I don't think Nikola. Um, that would, that seems like the, the last uh, group they would acquire. Um, I think they probably do small acquisitions of technology bits that they might need. Who was it that they um, uh, recently acquired? It was a, a capacitor battery, company. Who was it? Yeah, that? battery company. Um, Maxwell. Maxwell. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, but there was one even more recent. Uh, Fred kind of found it in a uh, patent that they were doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are all small, like, you know, 30 person startups. Um, and I think they'll continue to do that. Um, it's hard for me to imagine them acquiring a bigger company. Um, you know, we're, we we kind of joke about like, well, maybe they should acquire Mazda and just refit their lines. You know, a company like Mazda where, you know, they have no EVs and they have no hope. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. That's ours. <laughs> Mazda? No, I, it's just funny how you phrase oh. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so here's here's a great question and actually i could even expand on that too. this is from from our club president patrick uh how do you get so uh, so much news early when it comes to tesla do you have insiders feeding you private information um, i'll just expand on that too just before you respond um i was speaking with uh, someone at tesla fairly high up in, in the in the chain and um they said they they'll be on their way to work in the morning you know over to, to a tesla location read something on electric go hmm you know it's a, a rumor of sorts they get to work a few hours later, their higher up gives them some fairly important information. And he's like, I read about this on the way to work before I even found out about it from Tesla. So yeah, what, what do you make of that? And you know, how do you get so much news early on? Yeah, so we do have some uh, important sources um, inside Tesla and you know, in the ecosystem um, that tip us off to, to some stuff. Um, there's also just people who are very clued in and, and, um, you know, there's like a Reddit community and, and different communities that are, you know, kind of like the Tesla forums, uh, TMC, I think is, is the one. Um, so we keep an eye on that stuff and, and, um, when something big comes up, we're pretty quick to jump on it. Gotcha. All right. Um, fun question. What is your favorite Tesla accessory? Hmm, that's an accessory. <laughs> I mean, there's there's a couple of them. Um, I did that. I bought that test mat, and uh, for car camping is kind of cool. Um, let's see what else is cool? Carbon fiber spoiler. No, I'm not, I'm not, a, not a spoiler or turbocharger <laughs> uh, guy. I mean, the Chatamo adapter saved me one time. Um, but I'm, I'm selling that now if anybody wants it, um, uh, waiting for that, uh, CCS combo. You could list it on our, uh, community marketplace on our, on our site. Yeah. I also have, uh, model X, uh, snow tires still, if anybody needs those, let me know. Um, uh, so yeah. favorite accessory you would narrow it down to. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to probably go with the, the car camping kit. That's, that was really a, a fun time. To, to camp cool. in the in the back of the car. We um we're definitely gonna do one next year, but we had a club camping trip. Um, I think it was July, and that was one of our best events we ever had. That was super fun. Carson's actually on here. Carson's down in Florida, sadly now, uh, but he pretty much organized everything about that event. He did a phenomenal job. Um, here's a, a great question too, kind of as, as far as news and updates. Um, with the upcoming charger charger sharing with other EVs, uh, how do you see that having an impact on the charging space? Um, so a couple things. One, um, like obviously, we don't see the same kind of uh, lines that um, they see over in, in California. So Tesla made a point to say, hey, we're going to take this slow. We're going to make sure there's a lot of spaces left. Um, we're not going to do it in areas that um, are already congested without you know, adding more supply. Um, I think it's a money maker for them. I think they can actually, you know, turn a profit on it. They they said there's going to be a, a charge, uh, an extra charge for people who aren't Tesla owners. So, um, and it's also an opportunity. I think, um, you know, superchargers in general are, 
you know, destinations where you're, you know, like slightly affluent people are spending 30 minutes. Uh, that's, that's hard to come by, you know, every, every retail establishment would be, should be begging for these things. Um, so, you know, I don't know, it's, it's, uh, it, it, there's a, a couple problems, like one, you know, like a Mustang Mach-E or a Porsche Taycan doesn't have the charger in the same location. So if, a, you know, right now, if a, a Mustang Mach-E pulled up and wanted to charge, it would take it, it would take two Tesla spots because huh. it would be taking the one from the other side and, it would, you know, pull in the other way. Um, you know, the same with the Taycan, the Taycan has the charger on the driver's side front. So I don't even know if if the, the cable uh, charger it. could reach it, yeah. let alone, um, you know, you would have to pull in sideways and take up like four spots to, to charge a uh, tie can. So definitely you see a, a couple issues arising. Yeah. There's, there's big and Be small besides issues. just less spots available in general. Right. Right. But, you know, theoretically uh, Tesla can ramp up their, their uh, infrastructure as well, especially if there's a paycheck at the end of the tunnel. And also, it sounds like there might be some infrastructure money in, involved as well. Uh, having used the key fob on SNX versus the key card, or the key fob on the SNX versus the key card in the three, it seems the key card is flawed. Is a flawed idea that slides off. Why haven't they come up with a better solution? Um, I well, so the key card for me, um, I've had some issues with it. I understand where where people are coming from. But, you know, I think the long term, like, it's much better just to have, like, right now, I've, I've moved everything to my phone. So I have credit card license. My, she said, turned on my light. Um, my car keys are there. My, my house key is Bluetooth. So everything is in my phone, which, you know, for better or worse, like, if I lose my phone, everything's gone. But um, it's kind of nice to only have to pull one thing out every day. Um, so I think that's the, that's the end goal is just to walk up to your car. It opens for you, you know, you, you just go. And as long as you have your phone with you, which everybody has a phone with them, um, things should just work. Now that those things don't always work, uh, that well. And, you know, because things were working well for us, um, when we got new phones, we couldn't find our key cards to, to pair up our new phones. So we had to actually buy new key cards and then we had to go to Tesla to, to enable the key cards to enable our phones, which is quite annoying. So obviously some kinks still to work out. Um, we're getting close to the end here. I don't know if you, do you have a hard cutoff at, uh, at nine or can you go on a little bit longer? Yeah, I can go to almost 930. Okay, all right, we'll go through a couple more. Um, so I, I was just gonna say, we, we do have um, a partner with the club. They, they do not pay us for this, but uh, there's a brand called uh, Kinnick and they make the Tesla ring. I don't know if you can see that, but just if, if you're interested in buying one, uh, paid members do get a 15% discount. And this is a great way to not have to worry about the cards sliding all around. So cool product placement right there. <laughs> all right. Uh, so next question is battery degradation. Do you see uh, any, any hints? I mean, this is a good, good question too for new owners workshop. Uh, which we have on the 17th. Um, but is, uh, do you know any tips or tricks for lessening battery degradation? I mean, uh, like charging all the way to 100%, um, I think is probably the number one thing. Not to do. Causes issues. <laughs> um, I've had different uh, degradation on different cars, even the Model 3 and the Model uh, Y that I currently own. The Model 3 actually has more range than the Model Y, even though they're both supposed to have like 325. My Model Y has degraded way faster than my Model 3. And then, you know, they have the same, same pass, batteries, is, right? Yeah. Right. So it's, it's quite strange. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know. I think it a lot, a lot has to do with, you know, which particular batteries got put into which particular model. Mm. We know that the, um, the 90 uh, kilowatt our pack that went into the Model X and the Model S were particularly bad. Um, we actually got Tesla's own data from that, and we saw like a much steeper decline in in the uh, the average um, degradation in the 90 kilowatt hour than the 85 kilowatt hour. Uh, so. Do you think that EV charging will ever match the speed of filling up ICE as a gas car? Um, 
it's hard because um so not in the near future um what i think you would almost have to have is like kind of like a buffer like if you had like a um a super capacitor buffer so you have like you know a, a solid state battery i'm assuming in five years everything will be solid state and then you have a super capacitor and then you have these you know megawatt chargers um then you could theoretically charge up you know that you would throw it all in the super capacitor and then the super capacitor would kind of slowly put it into the the battery as you were kind of driving off from the uh the charger mm -hmm. that's kind of the only way you could do it um you know unless you want to do fuel cell or whatever i, I saw you you nod your head before when i mentioned atlas uh, i think they're planning to do 15 minute charge times i think they're, they're they're nailing under 15 minute charge times today with like the plans of five minutes in the future but their battery technology is extremely different from from any other company out there today i don't know how much research you've done into them but uh yeah so they've they've so they've kind of set off our spidey sense because they were trying to do a lot of uh marketing with us um and you know that's always kind of a weird thing mm -hmm. is when the marketing comes before the the technology in the building that's one of the things we liked about rivian like they were they were getting their manufacturing up to speed long before they were you know coming at us with their marketing stuff um another company aptera i don't know if you've heard of them yeah. they, 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 they were from companies. way back in the day like 2008 or something right? right so you know obviously that's a that's a red flag but um you know give them a chance problem with them is they're also sending us tons and tons of marketing mm -hmm. and and we're like where's your factory where are you going to build these things how are you going to you know so you guys you guys take that pretty seriously as far as hey look we're not going to promote your company if we don't have a great feeling about it like maybe they're right. fine maybe they do everything good and they just want some marketing but you had electric that's that's i mean that's really respectful just give a little applause well, we have that. to we have to filter out the you know the trevor milton's of the world uh some way like because there's the thousand people who are saying that they're going to be the next you know, next new battery talk, right, technology right. comes out every every week. Um, so we gotta we gotta do our our due diligence on everything. So, uh, have you experienced phantom braking? Uh, I have documented on three different times Tesla phantom braking at the exact same spot at one hundred percent recurrence rate. Yeah, te uh, yeah. Tesla service simply says we cannot reproduce. Is it, there's a so yeah. Pretty much, have you had experience with phantom braking? Yeah. So there's a place on the Taconic. I don't know. If you guys are, are familiar with the Taconic, but there's a place on the Taconic that with that our car always breaks uh, when we're doing uh, autopilot. Um, Any is there uh, a bridge of sorts? Or? No, it's not a bridge. It's it's. Um, I think it's actually like some rocks and stuff that are there that kind of look like another car to the hmm. autopilot or something. Um, but it it's happened for years. We go uh, to Vermont skiing. Um, most weekends in the winter. So we're, we're going up to Taconic all the time and we actually know where, it, where it's going to happen and take off autopilot uh, ahead of time because we know it's, you know, it's going to do that. Gotcha. Um, great question to hear from Carson, which is, and this is one of the things that excited me about Neo when they first came out, um, charging or battery swapping, what do you think is the future? So I was kind of sad to see that uh, Tesla wasn't doing battery swapping. Because they proved um, they could. They yeah, they, they, they demonstrated it. Um, that was actually one of my first big events with Tesla. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of smaller questions like, well, if you swap out your battery that's brand new with somebody else's battery that's right. a couple years old, and then you're driving around with a couple year old battery, that's, you know, kind of a problem. I mean, I'm, you know, I, I kind of feel like it's a little bit frustrating okay. as you know, my, my commute's like 10 miles every day. I'm driving around with 300 miles of range and that I need two or three times a year. Not, not two or three times. I, I drive a lot more, a lot more often, but you know, most days I'm driving around a 300 kilowatt hour or sorry, a hundred kilowatt hour pack or, you know, 50 or 75 kilowatt hour pack when I only need like three or four kilowatt hours. So if there was some modularity, you know that would be kind of nice like maybe you know you can take these battery packs and put them on your wall and then you know they're back up power for a long time and then you know you're going on a trip and you pull them off and put them in your car that Obviously, would help battery tesla's goes. battery constraints too which is if you sell someone a car that has a 40 kilowatt hour pack 
okay, and now I'm going from, you know, uh, Montauk to Buffalo and oh my gosh, this is hundreds and hundreds of miles. Oh, cool. I just pull up to the swap station, plop in a 125 pack and, you know, pay a little bit of an, you know, upcharge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, batteries are heavy and they would clank around and probably the, the sliders would be, you know, not great. And there's a lot of things to solve there, but, you know, you kind of have to wonder like what, what exactly would, would it take to do a modular battery? And we did at uh, the uh, IAA in, in Munich, we were at um, a couple months ago, um, they did have a modular battery pack vehicle. They, I think they were selling it in Th Thailand or something. Um, do you see FSD and Tesla insurance hurt performance model sales? Um, so it, I'm quite frustrated. I don't know what your, your score was, but um, you can pull up mine here in a second. Um, you know, you go to LaGuardia airport once and you're like, score is over 40 or something. Yeah. It's, it's in, there's no way to avoid it. I'm at 91 right now. Um, which not, you know, not horrible, but like, I would like to be like, I paid for FSD. I would like to use it right now. Um, so I don't know. I, I think it's a bummer. Like, you know, if you want to do well on your, on your score, you got to drive slow and, and, uh, it's not quite as fun. Oh, I just realized, I think the question was more so too about um, te uh, FSD and test uh, and, uh, and insurance hurting like the, the, the aspect of selling. Okay, so I, I, yeah. Um, so meaning there's no more reason to buy a performance model three, a plaid model S um, when FSD does all the driving anyway. So do you see those components or, or insurance? Um, like you said, just like you just stated with, with, the, uh, with the, the, the score, right? People are like, I don't wanna drive my performance car like a nut because you know, right. I, I want to have a low insurance rate. Right. Um, I think people still like to drive. I know I like to drive. So I don't think, you know, you're buying a Tesla. You're not, even with FSD, like the ability to do FSD, um, people still like to drive. So they're still going to buy performance vehicles. Um, not everybody likes to drive, obviously, but, um, you know, not everybody wants to, be, you know, P100. So, all right. I have a couple of uh, closing questions here for us. So, any new sites that you're working on? We are playing around with a VR site um, at the moment. Uh, we're playing around with a Bitcoin site or a uh, crypto, not Bitcoin, but a, um, a crypto site called Block Talk. Um, yeah, that's that's all for now. Keeping ourselves busy. So I think you already kind of told us this before, but what's your next vehicle? Rivian. Okay. <laughs> any, I mean, any idea on when a uh, delivery is going to be for that for you? Uh, so I was told to expect it in the summer. Um, so that, that would be nice. Um, Fred actually reserved one uh, of the first, you know, like basically at the LA Auto Show in 2018 when they were revealed, he, he ordered one. And now he doesn't want to get one. So I'm hoping I can swap his reservation. What was uh, his rationale for not wanting it? Um, I don't know. I know I know he has a Cybertruck on order. I have a reservation for a Cybertruck. I mean, they're a hundred bucks. Everyone has a reservation. Right. <laughs> I have five. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, I've so, four, um, so. yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I, you know, if, if I have two uh, Tesla Roadsters, uh, you, know, you do from, my, from the referrals from the referral really uh, good so congrats if, if those ever get delivered that would be my next car okay so just no bad news for from you for like the next few years when it comes to tesla <laughs> i well, just I mean, referring to, to fred and, and how uh he lost his which was yeah he, he lost what uh fred lost his uh roadster uh referrals he did how do you you don't know this <laughs> I don't. I didn't know. Yes. That. Yeah. I mean, that's. Are you I, sure yeah. it wasn't rich? Rich rebuilds. Yeah, Rich lost his too. But um, oh, okay. I'm 99.9 percent .9 sure that that it was Fred also lost. He had the, the two roads to referrals. Um, there might even have been another pretty big name out there that besides um, Rich. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't know. Yeah. 
<laughs> I, I'm surprised that happened. I don't think I, well, I think that information might be wrong. You're fairly tame on on Twitter, so there there is that too. You know. I mean, he he got blocked by Elon. I don't know if that's what you're yeah. referring to. Oh, that too. But yeah, so okay. from, from what I know, I mean, maybe you could double check. Maybe maybe the Tesla Twitter community got it wrong. But to 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 the knowledge I think that I have, that might be. I think that might be wrong. Really? Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, I guess we'll, we'll ask um, a few more from the chat and then I have one final question for you. So how can Lucid put up better technical specs than Tesla when they are a much smaller company and much younger? Will Tesla be able to deliver the same specs? I think what uh, Lucid's hitting what, 512, 512 miles? For yeah, them. they just have a bigger battery. Like uh, Tesla could build a bigger battery. They could, I mean, I think that the Roadster is gonna have like some crazy you know, 200 kilowatt hour battery yeah. and 600 miles of range. That was. I don't know if they're going to build it like that, but that was originally what it was spec'd out to be. Um, Lucid just chose to build a bigger battery. Kind of like they, Tesla with the Roadster initially, right? High high price car, um, right. high margin, but then also really impressive specs. Right. So, you know, Tesla could do that if they wanted to. They just, they're trying to build cars for more people. Lower uh, prices. All right, so I think maybe we'll make this the last question from the chat and then I have one more to wrap things up here today. Um, if, if you have the answer to this, why doesn't Tesla have more service centers? Uh, a lot of places Please. don't know how to service the cars. I think it's a money issue. That they don't have the money up front? Um, yeah, I, I mean, Tesla is worth a lot of money, but they don't have tons of cash and, and you know, it's hard to expand you know, as fast as they're expanding. I mean, I know they're putting up more service centers, but um you know down here um there's one in Terrytown now um and and you you know this and i think this is part of what you're doing tomorrow is like they they're only allowed a certain amount of uh dealerships so right if from from my knowledge just that to answer the question um and, and this is all you know just i wouldn't say it's like common sense but i think it, you could kind of tie a couple things together uh, which would be that Tesla most likely wants to tie service centers to sales locations right. rather than have standalone. So uh, yeah, if I can answer your question, uh, the goal is rather than have a sale or a service center here, a service center here, and then, oh, now we have sales locations. It's, hey, let's get the sales locations. Let's make it a service center, a gallery. Um, so to my knowledge, from what I could tell, uh, that that's the reason why. Um, and But like Seth said, it also could just be cash on hand. Everyone looks at Tesla, oh my gosh, a trillion dollar company but how much cash do they have on hand to, to spend? All right, so last question for you, Seth. What is one piece of advice that you would give to our audience? It could be anything related to business, owning an electric car, anything about life in general. <laughs> Big question for you at the end. Uh, yeah, just don't spend too much time at work. Like, uh, <laughs> enjoy the, uh, the kids and the family and the friends and the, and the enjoyment. I, I probably spent way too much of my time over the last 20 years building websites and I'm, I'm kind of pulling back from that and, and spending time with the kids and I'm enjoying that a lot more. That's great life advice. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so are, are there any places that our members here can uh, to learn more about you or, um, you know, electric nine to five, some of the other websites that, that you have going? Yeah. I mean, most of my daily stuff is on Twitter um, and my, my handles and my thing right there. Um, below mine right there um, and uh, yeah I don't know the, all the all the websites are kind of in the drop down there so you know as we continue to add more websites like block talk and uh, we have space explored now which covers SpaceX if you guys are big SpaceX fans what um, uh, what site is that space explored uh, it's just a, a space site um, we're, we're it's kind of a lot of fun like uh, you get to go to like launches and stuff because we're, you know, the media, so we get to go you know, really oh. close to the those launches and stuff. Oh, that is cool. I feel like I'm, I'm creating sites based on, like, what I want to do, <laughs> like, what I want to do as hobbies. So, you know, like, all I'm, your passions, like, oh, right? This yeah. Peloton's fantastic. I'm going to make a site about it. Oh, it's great. like my model, I guess. Well, Seth, I think that's that's all the questions from the chat. That's the last one that I have for you. So thank you so much for, for spending an, an hour of your, your time with us. And we really appreciate it, uh, truly. So thank you so much.